Hi, I'm Erin and I'm from uh, WIDEC as well, so uh, another York based person. And I'm going to introduce uh, matching adjusted and direct comparisons um, on uh, in R. Um, so, just as a kind of caveat, this is the kind of intro to um, makes in R, so it's uh, not very detailed, it's for kind of newbies that have uh, seen this for the first time. So a really quick introduction. Um, so uh, relative treatment effects are essential, obviously, in healthcare decision making. Um, and usually they'll come from um, randomized control trials where we're comparing two things head to head. Um, and that's the gold standard. And as we've touched on earlier, if we've got multiple uh, randomized control trials, we'll do a meta analysis to make sure that we're incorporating all that information into uh, submissions. Um, but the problem is when we don't have um, randomized control trials to um, make direct comparisons with. So um, what do we do when we don't have that information? We have to make indirect comparisons um, in uh, trials that aren't comparing the interventions we're interested in. And um, predominantly that uses two methods or two common methods, um, which is just the simple indirect com uh, uh, comparison and network meta-analysis. So they're probably um, more known to people, um, but they have two requirements when we use them. And the first one is that we have to have a common comparator um, to preserve the randomization in the trials, um, and also that the trials don't differ in terms of the baseline characteristics um, that might affect the treatment effect. Um, but in reality, there are scenarios where that um, isn't the case. Um, and then we have to look for other methods um, to overcome some of them uh, issues. And um, so population adjusted indirect comparisons uh, uh, is the uh, methods that help overcome them two issues being the main two issues that it's um, uh, looking at. Um, so usually uh, this requires IPD, individual patient data for one of the sorry, uh, one of the um, trials and then um, aggregate data for the comparator or multiple um, uh, comparators. Um, and in most cases that happens where a company that's submitting will have their own IPD so to run their own trial, but that they haven't got data for the um, uh, comparator trials or they haven't quite directly compared it to um, some of the comparators that are relevant. And um, that can happen, especially in disease areas where we've got a lot of different treatments for the same um, disease, um, then it's not really practical to include them all in a randomized control trial. So then we might have to um, do some indirect comparisons, even though we have our own trial as well. Um, and the aim of it is to uh, adjust for differences between the trials. So um, essentially differences in baseline characteristics. Um, the other thing about uh, population adjusted methods is it is preferred that we have a common comparator, but in cases where it's just absolutely not possible, where we have single um, trials, um, we, it, we can still use these methods um, to uh, compare without it. So that's another um, reason why we might not be able to use the other methods that I've mentioned. So in 2016, uh, NICE uh, um, published a technical support document 18 that looked at these methods and in particular at match adjusted indirect comparisons and also uh, simulated treatment comparisons. And up until this point, they were already being used in some submissions, but this just made it easier um, to understand how and um, why we might um, need them in uh, submissions. So it just became easier for them to be included or not included if they weren't uh, relevant. So just a really brief overview of the two methods. The main difference between the two methods is that uh, SCC uses uh, predictive equations um, to uh, model the relationship between baseline characteristics and outcomes, whereas a make is um, looking at re-weighting patients in the IPD um, so that the weighted baseline characteristics match those in the comparator trial. Um, and what we do is either use those equations or use those weights to adjust um, the outcomes in our IPD. So we're match, making sure that our outcomes match the, tra the trial of the aggregated data that we've got. Um, and then once we've got these adjusted outcomes, we can then compare them directly um, to the outcomes that are reported in the um, aggregate studies. Um, so when might we consider them? There's, there can be issues with um, modeling uh, the predictive equations or issues in calculating weights. So if there's issues with them, we might consider one over the other. Um, also, 
uh, if we're working with non-linear outcomes, um, we might prefer a make, or if we have limited overlap in some of our adjustment variables, then there's evidence to say that uh, SDC might be uh, the preferred method. So this example isn't to advocate the use of one of their methods over the other. Um, it's more just to provide um, an example of how we can easily use them um, uh, methods in R. So again, this is going back to the fact we're looking more at um, the basics rather than more advanced um, makes that we might want to do or population just comparisons that we might want to do. Uh, so this uses the uh, make package and that's just a package that's been um, created to generalize a workflow um, for generating the weights um, and it replicates the uh, code that was uh, provided in the NICE guideline. So um, I did test there, we used the uh, NICE uh, IPD that they generate in that code and it does produce the same results. Um, and the main benefit to using it is just that it's much more repeatable and it's easier to specify uh, the different variables that we're interested in. So it basically is, is the same, but easier to use. Um, so I've kind of created a hypothetical scenario, so all the data is simulated, uh, it's not a real example at all, uh, but I just thought it might be easier to understand if I put it into some sort of context. Um, so we imagine we have a, a trial one which we have IPD for, and it's comparing treatment A with placebo, and we've got trial two that we've got aggregate data for, and it's comparing uh, treatment B with placebo, and we're looking to reduce uh, HbA1c in patients with uh, diabetes. So we want the uh, levels to go down, so it's decreasing. Um, that would be fine. We could do um, some sort of simple and direct comparison, except for we think that there's differences in the baseline characteristics. So in particular, we looked at age, uh, baseline, hba one c and um, FPG. Um, and the um, baseline uh, hba one c is known to, so if you've got a higher baseline, it's known to have a, a better impact post baseline. So we're we're trying to see if that's going to affect our results. Um, so I've kind of summarized like an easy version of what you need to do if you want to consider a make. So firstly, we're going to import our data. So we're assuming that it's already clean or in the format that we require it. And then the second thing we're going to do is summarize in baseline characteristics to see if there are actual differences and, and whether we should be considering these population adjusted methods. Um, then the third step, which is where the package really comes in, is that we're going to actually calculate those weights. And then steps four, five and six are to evaluate the weights that we've calculated. So um, are they doing what we want them to do? Do we think that they're going to um, produce reliable results? Um, so the first one is to compare our adjusted baseline characteristics to those reported in the aggregate data. So has our weighting worked? Do they now match? Um, then we're going to plot the um, weights, so we want to have a look at the overall distribution of the weights, and um, if we've got lots of non-zero weights, um, then we might have high level uncertainty, if we've got really high weights, it might skew our results, um, and then we calculate the um, effective sample size, which is essentially saying how much information have we managed for, to retain in our IPD, um, and we want that to be as high as possible, so we've got as most information. Um, in reality, how well that works is, is very well. Um, then once we're, we've evaluated the weights, then we can use those weights to calculate um, our adjusted outcomes. We can actually just do a weighted average, but more likely we're going to use a, a model because we want to use the sandwich estimate for the variance um, so we can uh, calculate confidence intervals. And then once we've got those adjusted outcomes, then finally we can then come back and compare it to whatever's reported in our aggregate data. Um, so I'm going to flip to my code. Hopefully this works okay. Seems so. Um, so uh, we're loading the packages. So as I said, we've got the make package. Um, and then we've got this um, sandwich package as well, which is used to obtain uh, standard errors using the sandwich estimator. And that's the same as what's in the NICE guidelines. So it's uh, no difference there. So I'm going to read in the trial one IPD, and then I'm going to just calculate unadjusted um, outcomes for that trial. So we can see what it looked like before we did the adjustment as well as after. Um, although if we do think there's differences in the populations, then we might argue that though those unadjusted, um, when we compare to the unadjusted outcomes, they're not valid, but we'll, that's slightly different. And then we're going to um, input the aggregate data. And again, I'm just going to extract the um, outcomes just so that they're easy to have a look at um, and compare to the 
and adjusted. Um, and then uh, this is step two in my steps, which we're just going to have a look at the baseline characteristics. And they're just, I've just put them in the output table, but they were actually in that presentation. So we're saying, okay, well, it looks like there's some differences there. Maybe we should be thinking about population methods. Um, so next is how we actually, this is kind of the, the benefits of using the package over the code, I suppose, just makes it a bit clearer to, um, to use and, and what we have to input. So the first thing we need to do is um, define the make dictionary. And there are well, the four different elements to it in this example, but there is actually a fifth element if we want to look at standard deviations, but we aren't in this one. So firstly, we just name the variables that we're including in our matching. Then we um, define them in our uh, aggregate data, so our target um, variables. In this case, they're all the same name, so it looks a bit like we're just repeating it over and over again. But in actual fact, when we get data in, which in, it's not just simulated, we might end up with different names there. So it's just making sure that that R knows which variables match which um, each other. Um, so we do the same in the IPD, and then that last one, match type, is just saying what we want it to match on. So in this case, we're matching on all means. But we can also use proportion, and as I said, we can use standard deviation, but it just requires a little extra bit at um, the, the bottom of that as well. Um, so once we've defined the dictionary, then we can use this uh, create make input um, uh, function that's already in bulk for us. And again, this is just really simple to use. So it has our index um, and target uh, data, so whatever we've called it in our um, the dictionary that we've just previously defined. And then again, we're just going to um, repeat our matching variables, which again, we've already defined. Um, so we can run that, and that is essentially most of the work done. So it's really, really simple to kind of to follow and implement in R if, if uh, some of the underlying functions you aren't quite sure about. Um, so, uh, and then we're just gonna extract the weights from that so we can um, use the make weights uh, function. And uh, then we've got a vector up here containing all the weights for the patients. Um, then we're going to do the evaluation. So this is the next three steps I was talking about. So again, they have this um, function in the package called report covariance, which summarizes the baseline characteristics for us. Um, uh, so if we run that and have a look at this summary, it's really quite useful because it tells you um, what variables you've got, the target, so what's reported in your aggregate, and then it's got the unadjusted and the unadjusted p-value, and then the um, adjusted and the adjusted p-value. So it's really easy to see exactly what's changed and what's happened. Um, so we can see that they were significantly different uh, before adjustment and then they're not after. So we're like, okay, well, we're happy with that. It seems to be working. Um, so uh, at this point, we're like, okay, it's looking okay. Let's keep going. And um, we're going to rescale the weights. And again, that's in line with what nice did. It just makes it um, easier because it's more relevant to the um, unit, weight, original unit weights. And then once we've re-weighted those, we can just put us, um, get a summary with our minimum and maximum, uh, but probably more interestingly is the histogram. So essentially we want weights uh, uh, normally distributed around one. It's, if you got that perfectly, it'd be amazing. I've never seen it. Um, but uh, these look really good, but it's in that data. So, the, um, so these seem to be okay. And then the, finally, we'll just calculate the ESS, um, which here is 232, um, which is about 77% of the original sample size. So again, we'd be pretty, we'd be pretty pleased with that. Um, so after we've evaluated our weights, then we're going to adjust our outcome. So we're just going to add the weights um, to the IPD, so uh, that they're in our IPD data, and then we're going to run a linear model. And here we're just looking at the change in um, HbA1c, and we're looking at it by treatment, um, and we just add the weights in there, so it's relatively easy. And then um, we're going to extract the information that we want. I'm just going to add it to that previously uh, previous data frame that I created called T1 outcomes, just for ease. Um, and then we can have a look at that if we bring that one up. So we can see it um, treatment over placebo before and after adjustment. Um, it doesn't seem to have had a great, a massive effect on it by adjusting. Um, and then our final step is just to put those results into a, a data frame. So it's a little bit of code there just to kind of combine them so we can see it. And I've got rid of row names because I didn't like them. Uh, <laughs> So then if we click on the results, um, now we're doing a um, simple indirect comparison now that we've adjusted for them. Um, so we've got, uh, before adjustment, it's slightly in favour of treatment A, remembering that we want 
it to reduce it, it's going down. Uh, and then after adjustment, it's it's slightly in favor of treatment bay. Um, but uh, in both cases, in non-significance, there's a lot of uncertainty around them. But again, this is just simulated data to kind of show you what it might look like. Um, so if I just go back to the presentation. So some concluding remarks. Um, these two tools are just tools that can complement traditional approaches. So um, if we do have some of the challenges, we don't have common comparators or we have very different uh, trials, um, then they're just options that we can use. And they're all, they're gonna come with their own strengths and limitations. So we do need to still be thinking about what data have we got? And if we use these methods, are they gonna be robust enough to justify the results? Because uh, as, as with all, all methods. Um, there are some kind of obvious things to mention. Um, the main one being is that um, they make relies on a good overlap between the study population. So our um, IPD data and the aggregate data, um, whereas SEC is more robust to that assumption. And there's a paper out there that says that um, for make spice can only be completely removed when the population of the aggregate study is entirely contained in the IPD. But in that case, then you might be arguing, do we need to do any adjustments if um, it's entirely contained? So again, something you need to think about when you're looking at your uh, data. Um, whereas uh, SCC, I think they can be limited overlap and in some cases no overlap and it can still produce robust uh, unbiased estimates. Um, and then we also need to think about the um, type of uh, treatment effects. So there's another study that looked at time to event data um, and they said that in, them, in that scenario, STCs could produce uh, bias because of the type of treatment effect that it's um, looking at. And then of course, we can um, control for anything that we haven't observed in the studies. And particularly if it's not reported in the aggregate data, but we think has clinical relevance and we've got it in our IPD, um, we're still not going to be able to do any adjustment for it. And that's always going to be a limitation of these methods. Um, and I'm just going to end by mentioning multi-level network meta-regression. Uh, re uh, meta um, so I don't know that much about it, but I know it's a, a newer method that's um, looking at compensating for some of the weaknesses that might be in makes and STC, uh, STCs. Um, and maybe that is uh, the way forward in terms of doing these under just uh, these indirect treatment comparison in the future. However, we're going to still be limited by the fact that this can't yet um, look at um, scenarios where there isn't a comp comparator. So um, we might then have to revert back to them. But there are lots of different tools that we can consider in these different scenarios. And um, there's a couple of references there that you can make use of. And um, the code's available at the GitHub, which you can't see in here, but it's actually on the bottom of the presentation. Uh, and then um, questions. We also have seven minutes, so excellent time for both. Um, any questions? In, I saw one big pop up on the chat, but any questions, Maureen, first? Oh, yeah, Aaron, I'm just wondering where, where you might be going later with this work. Would you be thinking of doing an STC or? Maybe a shiny app so we can just upload data and select our variables. I would very much like to look at uh, all of that. But, um... Uh, I suppose at the moment that I haven't got every plan to look at further at the moment, um, it, but it is something that really interests me. And I'd be quite interested to know more about this new method because I definitely have limited knowledge on that. Um, but it would be really exciting to build a shiny app. And especially when you look at the code like that and it's quite simple, it is probably not too difficult to, to create a shiny app. So maybe that's a, no, my next steps. If there is a package for the MLNMA, isn't there? Uh, the MLNMA is multi-NMA package, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I believe there's one of those. Um, I'm just going to put questions? the question up. Yeah. This one. OK, so um, in terms of choosing the characteristics, um, it depends whether you've got a common comparator or not. So if you have got a common comparator, then you're just looking at things that are going to affect the um, relative treatment effect. So then I suppose the most likely scenario is that you go to clinicians. Um, if you haven't got a common comparator, it's going to be a little harder, which is why they're avoided, um, because you have to then control for um, anything that might affect, might affect it at all. So you're not, um, you've got a much 
wider range of variables that you need to consider. Um, and again, I would say it comes from clinical clinical input, but uh, uh, a lot harder if you haven't got a clinical comparator. Can we take a general point, which is kind of a question, I guess. Um, I think that whichever way you look at this problem, whether you do MAX or SDC or the sort of regression-based methods like um, multi-level regression adjustments or two computations, the big problem that we have is that essentially we don't have one side of the IP. And what we do have on that side is often very limited information. Like you might have a marginal distribution of the variates, but you don't have some measure of the joint correlation that you might have across the covariates. And I think that that is the crucial part. That's what we should actually push people to give us. Because otherwise, inevitably, we're making up stuff and uh, we don't have the data to do. Yeah, absolutely. Just in terms of the camera, um, it, it is absolutely dependent on what is reported in the aggregate data. Um, and um, that can be quite limited. And they might not, as I've mentioned before, they might not report the baseline characteristics that you actually are really interested in. And trying to find that information out can be difficult. Um, and also we can get cases where we've got lots and lots of different aggregate uh, studies that we're trying to look at. And how do we incorporate them easily into a make, or do we just repeat the same processes for each aggregate study? So there's definite issues or limitations rather that we need to consider. Any more questions, Drew, before I have one? No. How have you found best to uh, present the outputs? Because that's always the challenge. You know, we get these outputs from R, but then how are you finding it works best trying to communicate those to the people? Um, in terms of clients, or just anybody. I mean, I've been tending to sort of do a technical copy and paste. Is there anything that that would be? Uh, yeah. Well, so um, recently, we did actually present as um, like a forest box, which I thought was quite an easy way to understand because they're already like people uh, generally have some understanding of forest plots, so you might have seen them before. But I like the output that I created there, where they're just little tables with before and after. But um, I think sometimes uh, it's maybe misleading, like if the unadjusted outcomes are preferred, then people might be like, well, we'll just look at the unadjusted outcomes. So I think it needs to be really clear whether they're valid, the unadjusted outcomes. Um, so yeah, kind of presenting like that mini table is, is all I've really done. Uh, we have got one minute, uh, otherwise we're on for, so we've got last question, we've got one, if not, we've got coffee and our COVID cake. <laughs> um, no more?